And we're live. Hi, everybody. Tamara here. And you are at Pen Paper Pad Talks Books, where I talk with some of your favorite or soon to be favorite authors about their books and their writing influences and how they got here. Today, we have a special guest, booktuber and author, Sarah Ella. Hi, everyone. So uh, let me tell you just a little bit about Sarah, Sarah Ella. She is a winner of the ECPA Christian Book Awards from her debut novel, Unblemished, which we will be discussing this evening. And she has been on BookTube, I think, for three years. Am I correct in that one? Is it three? Three or four years. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> yeah, the years do start to blur after a while, don't they? And um, she has her trilogy, Unblemished, and it's going to be wrapping up next year, much to the disappointment of her fans, I am sure. Unless maybe she's going to pull a Kira Cass and do a <laughs> spinoff. Hmm. Maybe that's something we can discuss. And I think that she is definitely well known for her love for YA fantasy and Disney. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me tonight. My pleasure. So Sarah Ella, she was actually one of the first people that I started talking to on BookTube so many years ago. And the first giveaway that I ever won was from you. Actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I actually won a copy of Kiara Cass's first novel. I'm pointing to my bookshelf over here because it's <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny that so long ago. <laughs> I know. I feel like like it was like YouTube newbies back then. So you've clearly been very busy. What's your average day like? Well, um, this year has been pretty crazy. I moved um, to Arizona from Utah, and um, I I work full time. I um, so my my life is pretty pretty full. I have to write in my spare time, um, or on my lunch break. Um, I don't have a lot of free time anymore to write so I have to be really disciplined um, in my writing um, it's harder to be a panster these days um, just because of how much little free time I have um, so generally I will like write on Sundays um, or when I have some time off um, but most days is just filled with being a mom and a wife and working and cooking and cleaning and then writing um, is whatever spare time I have left. That does sound like you're pretty jam-packed full of stuff to do. Is that why you haven't been on BookTube as much? Yes, um, as you know, it takes a lot of time and energy to not only film, but to edit videos. And I did do a video recently where I uh, did a cover reveal and um, talked a little bit about what goes into the creation of a cover um, a few weeks ago for my friend Nadine's book, Fox, which is coming out in July of 2018. Um, and that is like the first video I have filmed with my nice camera I think all year um, so it's definitely harder to be more consistent on YouTube and and not only that but to keep up with comments because I love to reply to everybody um, but I do have an end of the year video planned in which I kind of show you guys a year in the life of all of the crazy things that have gone on this year um, in my life and that will be coming out sometime next month Fantastic. And you're pretty active on Instagram as well. So yes, yes. People want to keep connected with you. They can find you on Instagram. Absolutely. And I have the link for your channel and your website in the description. And from your website, there's links to your social media if people want to stay connected. So I have yes. been reading Unblemished. I am I am a person, I like to um, kind of binge read and binge watch and everything. So I usually wait until the last book's out, but I wanted to at least get a feel for 
your trilogy and what's happening. And I've noticed like a big, a big kind of um, silent character in your story is New York City. Have you spent a lot of time in New York? I get that asked that a lot. Um, I don't think there's a reader who who hasn't asked me that question. I have never been to New York in my entire life. Um, it is a dream of mine um, to to definitely go and visit and see all of the places I've researched. But what's great about being an author in 2017 is that we have the internet and we have Pinterest and we have Google Maps and we have Google Street View. Um, and of course I did talk to some people um, who actually are from New York and who have lived in New York. If you watch the Lawn Gnomes channel, um, Steve um, lives in New York and so I asked him some questions about some like authenticity. Um, but mostly it was just a lot of research and looking at pictures on Pinterest um, that helped me get those descriptions. That's exactly what I was going to talk to you about. Because a lot of people who have tuned into my channel are writers and I know that world building is just huge regardless of your genre so um, it was really interesting to me because I knew that you weren't from New York <laughs> so it was very interesting to me to see how well played New York was in the novel so that was really exciting. thank you so much um, what what was your inspiration what sparked the reflections that whole thing? well I mean, I've always loved urban fantasy. I um, like, I mean, Harry Potter, I mean, iconic. I uh, Even Twilight, I would consider urban fantasy. Um, the uh, Fablehaven series by Ryan and Mole, I love um, when the real world is kind of interrupted by fantasy elements. And so I knew I wanted to have some kind of other realm. Um, and for the reflections, um, I just, I really wanted to come up with almost an alternate universe um, that reflected New York. And then as I explored that throughout the series, I kind of discovered as I wrote um, that not every reflection is a reflection of New York and that there are these whole other universes, reflections out there um, that are some reflections of actually some of our favorite mythical fairy tale type places. And you do love your fairy tales. If anyone has tuned in to Sarah Ellis channel before, then you've seen her epic dances and her kind of homages to Disney. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so what would you say would be the age range for your novels? I would definitely say age 14 and up. Um, it is a little bit of a lower starting range for a young adult only because um, it, it is the word I want to use. Um, I've been told by a lot of parents and, and by a lot of people that they appreciate that it's a little bit cleaner um, than, than some of the young adult novels out there, which I would consider more... Um, you know, new adult um, because they approach subjects that maybe you wouldn't want your younger teenager to be reading about. Um, so I've I've had parents, even middle grade parents of twelve and thirteen year olds, ask me if um, they think that if I think that it's an okay read for their and I just say, well, there's kissing, there is definitely romance in the book, but um, the whole idea is around that kisses are sacred and this, it's this kind of like sacred, powerful thing, and that's kind of as far as the romance in the book goes. I don't know what that rumbling is. If you can hear that, I'm so sorry. That's okay. So I, I noticed that you're book has been up for a lot of awards and many of them are somehow based within Christianity. When you were writing your novel, was Christianity something that you were drawing influence from? Um, absolutely. I mean, I think that whatever faith that we have, we that or whatever we believe in or, or spend time doing in our lives is definitely an inspiration in our writing. 
um, no matter what it is. And my faith is definitely something that's an inspiration and something that is important to me. And um, kind of the topics of light and darkness um, and good and evil have always been something that I've kind of looked at from a biblical biblical worldview. And so um, even though it's not a Christian book, it's definitely, um, I guess, what you might call a crossover book in which um, general market readers, but also readers of faith um, would feel comfortable reading it as a fantasy book. Right, so you don't have to actually hold the same beliefs to read the book. Which no, absolutely I think, not. That's very important. Um, as I was reading, I I read your, your um, your dedication to your mom. And in the beginning of the book, your protagonist, she is, she's at her mother's um, wake or what? I'm not sure if it would be actually be called a wake, but um, it's after the funeral has taken place. And while I, I know from your channel, a little bit about your mom and your loss. And I was wondering as I was reading if you kind of channeled some of that into those beginning scenes. They felt very real. Um, that's a great question. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that it came across authentic um, to you. Uh, it's definitely something that inspired those beginning scenes. I think I wrote 17 or 18 different versions of that first chapter when I first started. Um, it always started with a kind of a funeral type scenario. Um, but I, I wrote that first chapter um, very, almost very immediately after my mom passed away in 2012. Um, and I mean, definitely Eliana's mother, Elizabeth, it, it's she's very much my mom hurt from her favorite tea to how protective she is of of my main character um all of that is is very close to home for me and um i definitely um you know put my my emotions and my heart into eliana's grief in the beginning of those chapters i think that it's important for us as authors to tap into things that are real and important to us. And clearly you did that and that's what makes it feel authentic. I appreciated that. But to move on a little bit, let's talk a little bit more about that writing process. So you started this novel in 2012? Um, yes, yes. So it was a long time coming. Um, I kind of dabbled with the beginning stages of it for quite a while. I nano rimoed it in um, 2012, and it was a big, <laughs> it was a big hot mess. Um, uh, all sorts of crazy things, kind of, you know, very twilighty um, things in which she gets saved from being hit by a car, and um, you know. But that, it's. I mean, we all, I think, tend to to have some kind of fan fiction going on when we're writing and then we go back and we go back and fix it because we write the books that inspire us and um and at the time I loved the Twilight series so um definitely then I I entered a, like a lot of contests and I uh started just working really hard on it and got a freelance editor and um 2014 and then 2015 was when I got my book contract so yeah, this this one thing I wanted to talk about was kind of your trajectory from that first really rough Twilight S draft to today, where you are you're looking at the cover of your third novel. Like how exciting! How excited are you to be where you are right now in your writing career? I'm super excited. I'm glad to to um. To have a break for one, having turned in um, my third manuscript and and being off deadline for just a second, um, it it feels really good to have a complete and finished trilogy. It's it's kind of a whirlwind because um, 
I just, I, book, book three, Unbreakable, which releases in May, was that I've ever done. Um, and my editor would attest to that for the half manuscript I turned into her with a summary of what the next 50,000 words was supposed to be. Um, it, it's, and now that it's, it's finished and completed and I'm going through the proofreading stages and writing my acknowledgements, um, I feel very blessed, um, to have not only accomplished that, but, but to have met all the people that I've met along the way, booktubers like you and just my wonderful publishing team and all of the people I've met on social media and at writing conferences. Um, it's really the people and the connections that I would say is my favorite part of all of this. It's been pretty incredible to, to watch you kind of grow and, and uh, move, move forward in your writing career. It's, it's been really, it's been really cool. It's, on booktube we know how much you love books that's what we do here we talk about mm -hmm. books <laughs> so it's it's exciting to see one of our own kind of prosper and someone who clearly had a writing ambition already before he started the channel do you feel that being part of the booktube community kind of helped you along the way Oh, absolutely. Um, I wouldn't be where I am as far as like social media platform goes without my, my booktuber friends. Um, especially like in the early stages of booktubing, um, that was where I found my community. That's where I fell in love with young adult fiction. And, um, I mean, my, my booktuber people have supported me. I mean, here I am talking to you, um, getting to talk about my books, and I've had so many people tweet about the books and talk about the books. I've had people make book trailers. Um, it's been really astounding because I it's not just relationships built solely on, hey, well, will you talk about my book, please, so that I can get my book out there. Um, they're all personal connections that I've made, um, which I would say to any author who's looking to build their platform um, for their books or for their writing career. Um, make those personal connections. Don't just make it about the book sales um, because the personal connections are going to take you a lot farther than anything else. I think that's excellent advice. And I think that I think that on BookTube, we this is not like the comedy community or gaming, or we're not beauty gurus. And it's just this small little niche in the YouTube platform. And I think that it's a lot easier to get to know people and to make those connections, even if you live, you know, thousands of miles away like we do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, when, should we tell the audience a little bit about your trilogy in case they don't know about Unblemished? Oh, absolutely. Um, Unblemished is um, the first book in the Unblemished trilogy. Um, it is a story about a girl named Eliana who has a mark on her face that she's had from birth and she thinks she's absolutely hideous. Um, and sh the book starts out with, as we said, um, her mom has just died and, and basically her mom is the only family that she has. She, she doesn't, she wants to be invisible. She doesn't, she's been hurt. She's had pain. She's been made fun of her whole life. Um, and now that her mom's died, she just kind of wants to disappear. Um, but as the story goes on, um, there's a cute boy, a couple cute boys actually, and um, <laughs> Eliana finds out that um, this mark on her face is more than um, it appears to be. And there's all sorts of cool things going on with traveling to a fantasy realm and the people have powers called callings. And um, it's really cool to see her grow throughout that. And the second book, um, which released this year is Unraveling which I won't say super a lot about for those who haven't read Unblemished, and then Unbreakable is the final installment, and that releases in May. So if people want to check these books out, should they, do you have links on your website, or should they look you up on Amazon, or where are your books available? 
Oh, well, either way, um, if you go to sarahella.com forward slash books, my books are listed there on that page. Um, I, they are on Amazon. You can find them at Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, um, really anywhere that books are sold. Um, if you have a local bookstore or library, you can go in and request it. Um, it's awesome if you request it at your local bookstore or library. We love um, indie bookstores and librarians, um, but it's also a available at major chains as well. Fantastic. And do you release a newsletter, a monthly newsletter or anything? So you give people the, the new news? Um, I just started um, up with my newsletter again. Um, and if you go to sarahella.com, there is a sign up um, at the bottom right of the page for my newsletter. Um, and I also do a, a Monday motivation video um, on Facebook Live on my Facebook page, Sarah Ella. Um, and I, I do a lot there on Facebook and then also um, Instagram. Uh, Sarah Ella Writes is my name on Instagram. And um, I kind of, uh, do a lot in my Instagram stories, particularly to keep people up to date. I think it's that sometimes it is easier to use the other platforms than YouTube. because When we do something for YouTube, we want it to be a lot more polished. And if you're live streaming like this, it doesn't have to be polished because, hey, life happens. <laughs> exactly. You just kind of get in front of the camera and chat for a bit. Ah, oh, this is excellent. If anyone who's watching, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, post them here in the YouTube chat. I'm going to check it out and see if anyone say anything. I haven't looked, which is very unusual. It looks like we have a couple questions. Um, oh, why did my page just refresh? Uh, creative. Crystal reads and writes, asks, Sarah, what advice do you have to writers who can't seem to land in the agent? Oh, well, that is a great, um, that is a great question. Um, I would say uh, if, you're, if you're having trouble with cold queries, um, meaning like you're sending query letters to agents and you're just not seeming to get a a response definitely keep trying um, but maybe also get some feedback um, if, it, if you do get a response from an agent that says you know no um, this isn't for me thank you very much um, don't don't be afraid to you know respond to them and say thank you so much for your time may I ask um, what particularly you didn't like they may not respond um, but it could help you in crafting um, a future query letter it doesn't hurt to ask and um, also to have other writer friends who have had success in in getting agented um, to maybe look over your query letter and see if there's anything that can be changed or taken out or um, to help your opening line um, I mean we do that with our manuscripts so why not with our query letters um, and I would also um, highly recommend attending writing conferences where um, I met my agent at a writing conference and um, I know that agents go to those conferences and the conferences do cost money but you can get appointments with agents to pitch your book to them face to face um, and sometimes that helps them remember you a lot better than just uh, through an email or a tweet. And just to add, um, with conferences, they often do have a fee, but you can try to mitigate that expense by seeing if you can volunteer at the conference. Um, and see sometimes if you are a student, there's some type of discount that you can access. So if cost is a barrier, try not to let it stop you. And there's so many online resources so many Facebook groups, so many groups in general. If you have a certain particular genre that you write in, you can access groups through that. I just joined a um, like a mystery society for writers because I'm starting a cozy mystery uh, series and I wanted to kind of connect with other mystery writers. Awesome. And uh, I host uh, Hashtag Write Stuff which is a tweet chat that happens every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, so that's going to be tonight in a few hours. So 
that's another way that you can access people. A few hours. Oh my gosh, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I anyone who's watched this channel before knows that I am absolutely terrible with time and time zones. So this for me to not know when my stuff starts. No surprise there. Well, to be fair, you're five hours behind New York, so. Yeah, um, everything's, and there's no change in time here, so it just confuses me constantly. Oh, that's Arizona doesn't have daylight savings or anything, so I kept posting that it was at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, and I'm like, wait, no, I'm not on Pacific time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I just use Eastern because I feel like more people, for some reason, for more people who view my stuff live in that area, mm -hmm. according to like analytics from different stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Was there anything that you wanted to touch upon in regards to the Unblemished series or books that you plan on writing in the future? Or what does well, this for Sarah? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, like I said, Unbreakable comes out in May, so um, anybody who's just finding out about this series and is wondering, um, you know, well, how long do I have to wait until I can buy the whole series as a whole? Because I know a lot of people don't want to pick up the series until all the books are released, um, and and the last book comes out in May, so um, if, you, if you are looking for a new series, um, all the books will be out by then, and uh, there are no uh, spin-offs or novellas planned as of yet, but I am working on um, another project, uh, which I can't really talk much about uh, right now, but stay tuned for some, some fun news hopefully coming up uh, next month about that. That's awesome. Also, for people who really like to have their books to look nice together on a shelf. These are very aesthetically pleasing. I have to say, they they did a great job on the covers. They look so good together. Yes, so, they do. They're just beautiful. They are really pretty. I, was, I remember when I saw the first one, I was like, oh, Sarah Ella! <laughs> <laughs> I'm really blessed to have an amazing cover design team. Yeah. Yes, you are, because we've all, we've all seen some of the things that they do. Um, it's not always that great, but this was wonderful, so. Thank you. So if you're looking for some pretty books for your shelf that have some really interesting stories, Sarah Ella has you covered. <laughs> I hope I hope so. I've gotten some good feedback, and everybody seems to like where the series is going. So I hope that and anybody who watching who picks it up um, would would feel the same way. And please feel free if you are watching um, and you decide to pick up the series, please tweet to me, um, comment on my Facebook page. I love to talk to readers, um, and I try to respond to everybody who contacts me as much as I can. Uh, we have another question. Uh, Jasmine A. asks, suggestions for first-time writers planning on self-publishing? Um, I would say uh, definitely attend um, an indie writers conference um, where you can talk to other indie writers who um, know what they're doing and have done it well. Um, if you're looking for self-publishing, I, I wouldn't say I've, I've heard two schools of thought, and I've, I've talked to writers who, who have done self-publishing well, and they love doing all of the business aspects of it and being in control of everything, and they take their time to get a cover designer and um, an editor and, and all of those things, and they like being in charge of all of those things. Um, and then I've talked to other people who have said, well, I've tried getting an agent. I've tried getting published. I'm just going to go ahead and self-publish. Um, like it's not this big, huge feat they're taking on. Um, so I would say self-publishing 
indie authors are amazing. I don't know how you do what you do um, because I could not do it <laughs> um, on my own being a, a mom and working full time. Um, but for those who are truly interested in self-publishing and doing it well, um, I would say um, do your homework, do your research. Don't just throw your manuscript <laughs> on Amazon um, with a cover made in PicMonkey. Um, take your time and invest in a freelance editor that comes recommended to you. Invest in somebody um, who can do a cover and do it well. Um, take time to put together a marketing package for yourself and, and plan everything and plan a release date and plan a cover reveal, all of the things that you would do with a traditional publisher. Um, treat indie publishing and self-publishing the same exact way um, you would see a traditionally published book published um, and make sure that you plan it out very well um, before you execute it and that's going to give you the best possible outcome. And, and that's coming straight from, you know, my mentor who is a self-published author. So. There's a lot of resources available. Um, some of my favorites, there's Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com. There's um, Derek Murphy and scores of others who have extensive book collections, websites and articles and YouTube videos that go into depth about trying to finagle the self-publishing world because it is um it's a lot more involved than what it seems but i feel like it's worth it i feel like it's very worth it but i would not say that i'm an expert i am still learning but it's i think it's a worthwhile endeavor if you're willing to put in the work oh absolutely um so let's see we are at the top of the hour now. Would you like to do the giveaway? Yes, I would love to do a giveaway. Um, what I told Tamara, what I usually do when I'm doing like a live type stream or a Facebook live, um, when I pick a giveaway winner, it I'm literally going to close my eyes and kind of scroll through um, the comments blindly and point at somebody's name and open my eyes and that's going to be the winner. Um, I am going to give away a copy of Unblemished, which is the first book in the series, and a copy of Unbreakable, wait no, Unraveling, <laughs> which is the second book in the series. I get confusing with all of the unwords. Um, and if I had a copy of Unbreakable, I would give that away too, but I do not even have ARCs for that yet. So it's just going to be the first two books um, to one winner um, in the United States. I can't mail out of the United States. However, if you are out of the United States, I can gift you eBooks. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to I could do a drum roll, but... scroll. <laughs> I'm scrolling with my eyes closed and I've got all the comments here on the screen and I'm going to take my magic finger and point to my computer and it looks like the winner is Jasmine A. Jasmine Yay! A. Yay, Jasmine! Congratulations! You are the winner of, ah, I have them back here on my shelf, um, copies of Unblemished and Unraveling. Yay! Congratulations! If you will, um, Email me your information to sarahellawrites at gmail.com, and I will type that here in the comments um, so that you know how to spell it. Um, go ahead and email me your information. Um, if you're ahead, and, um, you can email me your mailing address, um, and if you're outside the country, um, then we'll get those um, all be sure to gift you those ebooks to um, whatever email you prefer. That's so exciting. Did, I told y'all they're so pretty. So pretty. <laughs> oh, Sarah Ella, this has been awesome. I'm so glad we got to reconnect and chat. It's been great. Um, Sarah Ella, actually, she was part of the first Project Freight Tube. 
I think so. Yes. Yeah. And you've been doing it consistently for several years, years now. I, I even recommended it to my teen writers group um, who's doing NaNoWriMo this month. And I told them, you need to go look up Project WriteTube on YouTube. You're going to find so much good, helpful information. That's awesome. Yeah, you were definitely part of the first round. Phew. I think I've gotten a little bit better at the process. A little bit. <laughs> it's very organized. You're very organized. I don't know how you do it. Um, coffee. A lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thank you so much. I appreciate that you don't have a lot of time to spare, and I appreciate that you came and shared some time with us. Thank you so much for having me. And Jasmine, congratulations. Thanks to anyone who's watching this either right now or later watching the rebroadcast. I appreciate you being here. Um, like I said, Sarah Ella's website and her YouTube channel are in the description down below. I actually remember to put it in there beforehand. So, you know, not saying that I deserve a gold star, but <laughs> I deserve a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So you can find her on her Facebook and her Instagram. Those are places that you'll see her the most. Um, do read. Do read her books. They're so good, and I'm so proud. And I can't wait for May so I can get all of them in my tiny little grubby hands. <laughs> so everyone, um, I will be doing a NaNoWriMo write-in, speaking of NaNoWriMo, since that's all I've been speaking about this month. And I'll be doing that this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So join me if you want to write some words. And thank you again for tuning in. I'll be doing another, I'll be putting up another Pen Paper Pad Talks books next month, but it's one that was pre recorded with Jen Mann. She is the author of People I Want to Punch in the Throat, which is a hilarious book. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And um, we talk a lot in that book, in that uh, interview about her going from traditional to being self-published and what that experience was like. So definitely be on the lookout for that. So again, thank you. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.